mentioned how, how good Elijah Kansi has become with more experience this year. Last year, you know, he's trained for the combine, pro days, top 30 visits, all those kind of things. How good is this guy going to get? He just focuses on watching his film, doing the Buccaneers weight room, just being a Buccaneer this sure. upcoming so offseason. It's funny you mentioned that just the other day he was talking about, wow, we still playing and, you know, coming from a college career, he said we'd have been gone, we'd have been done a long time ago. So it was funny. He was talking about the length of the season and stuff like as he matures and everything, the sky's the limit for him because he's a – one, he's a very coachable young man and extremely talented. So those that combination right there, the sky's the limits for. With the RPO game, the quick passing scheme, the wide receiver screens, it's so hard for defensive tackles, unless you're Aaron Donald, to get right. double-digit sacks. Right. In the days of Warren Sapp, Roy Glover getting 16 in sacks, it's kind of come and gone. But right. is this a guy that because of his quickness and his elite speed that he can be a double-digit sacker at times? Well, with everything in there, he can definitely be a double-digit sack guy. He has that kind of ability, but a lot of other factors goes along with it. Who you got coming off the edge, you know, you playing with leads and stuff like that. But he has the ability to win one-on-ones on a high level, definitely. How have you seen his relationship with Yaya evolve throughout the season? I know their lockers are right next to each other, and they're just two standout rookies. Have you seen them sort of help each other along? Well, it's funny, but they end up on the same side quite a bit, and they communicate right away. Well. And I think they have a really good relationship with the thing to see. Of, and, you know, you're still talking about two rookies that we ask an awful, awful lot of, and they really responded well. Casey, sometimes, you know, not a lot of head coaches also call the defense or the offense. And right. You've got a coach here that does it. We're used to seeing him now as a head coach. Right. But you forget he's in here at 3 o'clock in the morning. And we see the game plans from last week, which, you know, was – Successful, but right. also unique. So, how 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 do you? I know you and, and Larry obviously help him. But right. take us through like the process of how he's able to to manage, you know, those two roles of, of being a defensive coordinator. Well, the thing he is an early bird. He in like three thirty, and instead of he started watching all the tape, and then when we start putting it together, this and that, you know, kind of a staple force we want to try to stop the run so you know yeah. the team last week you wanted to definitely try to make them one dimensional then it worked to our favor but uh, you know really it's a very unique because of the way he sees it and ways to wants to approach it and then you know also we have a situation where you have to manage our personnel too well we can, we need to stop this but we got to protect this or give up something you're robbing Peter to pay Paul yeah. so it's a, a juggling act but you know we kind of want to stay true to what we have principles and like first let's take care of this, yeah. and then we'll figure out the rest. Keith, with, without giving anything up, that front and the way as effective as you were on Monday night, is there something you point to for why you think it, it had the success it had? It's just math. The way the way it was, and, and take, uh, eliminating space. That's really, really all, all it was. It was stuff we were kind of told them to do something maybe they didn't want to do, and that's what we were saying. They were going to be hard-headed about it. We had to be hard-headed the other way. The origin of that, that six man front because playing four defensive tackles that, that's unconventional. You don't see that in the NFL. Well, we had pulled it out before when we were at the Jets and when uh, Fournette was there in the Jacksonville days, and it was some, some of the same concepts that we had used back in the in the past. We had it, we just had to dust it off and but clean it up, and it kind of fit for what our guys could do, you know, when you got to looking at that, well, we got him, he can do this, he can do that, and it just lined up perfectly for what they were trying to do. You're kind of daring them to, to try to throw the ball, but you had to give up the coverage. So you had to have a Zion, you had to have guys like that, right, to make that work, right? Right, and the thing is, with Todd's background and everything, it kind of helped because you say you were in this and can only play one coverage, and actually we had multiple, multiple coverages out of the same deal. So it was, uh, when you think you here, no, we kind of had this covered, and it was a kind of a chess match that worked out in our favor. When you talk about Todd Bowles, he's someone that you've obviously worked with at various staffs throughout your coaching career. Right. What can you say about this season and like the culture that you guys have built, especially on the defensive side of the ball? Well, the thing about him, I think some of you might have heard me say it in the past, Todd, you know, through the middle of the year, it was a rough, definitely a rough spot there, but it was definitely the unique thing about Todd, he's the same guy 
when we won five in a row, is the same guy when we had lost six. He is the same guy. He's never too high. He's never too low and always staying positive and just kind of keep coaching. And that's very unique because I've worked with some guys who be losing it if you don't lost two or three in a row and then one guy be sky high if you win three in a row. But he is the same guy every day. So that makes it unique and it keeps everybody calm, especially with these young players here. So it kept them calm and kept working, kept working, and things turned around. We've heard many times this season through the wins and the losses, that the effort has never wavered with this group. What's that like as a coach to just have an entire locker room that's giving it their all? Well, that's the thing. I look back and I might have told the guys before we went out the other night, the coaching this group has been very, very exciting because you look at there's a lot of young cats out there running around and being playing the first place schedule. You look at the people we played, you know, a lot of them still playing. So, you know, from the standpoint of you play tough people, you kind of show up every day, and being the young, they don't know any better. They just go out there and go, they don't know who they're playing. They don't know what they're doing. Just go out and play, and we just go with that. Did you kind of know that there would be a time when, obviously, Kyle Kalijah was hurt to start the season, but whether it was Yaya or Izian or, you know, Kyle, like, and he played all the time because somebody was hurt, but there would be a time where you're going to see these guys in there a lot. All right. the time. You, was that just kind of like we just got to write it out, and then there'll be a, a, a moment where they'll just they'll be the force. Then. I think it was a couple of games back, two or three. We looked out there, and maybe the kind of what you're saying is like four or five rookies on the field at the same time, and we knew it was gonna come. So it was maybe an injury, or maybe something, but it kind of forced the issue, and then guys start making plays, and we just kind of go with it. And you know, we didn't. And the thing, if we look back, we didn't change anything. Like we had to water it down for these guys. No, they got the full gamut, and they've responded well. With it. Can you talk about the development of KJ Britt, who's really bided his time in special teams and has got the opportunity to start and then earn playing time right. in, in packages where you're using him sometimes you know, more than depth? Right. Well, as you as you look at them, it's like, you know, we just kind of use what these guys can do. That's kind of been the staple of this defense. You look at this guy, why is he in there? Well, he can cover the Z. Why is he in there? He can cover the tight end. Why is he? Well, you know, the way it's kind of pushed together, these guys kind of. You show us what you can do, and the pack, the scheme has enough to help you help yourself, and that's just the way it has worked out. When you talk about young cats filling roles, what can you say about uh, Zion McCollum playing at safety last week and the job that he did? You know what, my hat goes off to him too. You know, we asked Zion to go in, cover the slot inside. Then, by the way, we can't leave you at slot all the time because they'll know what coverage we're in. So you got to play some safety to get the kind of disguise. And to my hat goes off to him. These guys are wearing a lot of hats and doing a lot of different jobs because. Three weeks ago, he had to go cover X and Z the whole game. Now you got to go play safety. It's just, hey, everybody's had a role in there. They did it off doing a great job stepping up. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.